You guys asked for it. Let's go ahead and check out a Nash guitar. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. That's right, we're checking out the Nash S63 guitar today. What does that mean? Well, the S means it is a Stratocaster-style guitar. The 63 means it's built on 63 Strat specs. Now, I'm not quite an expert when it comes to all those 63 specs, but we're going to check this thing out anyways. Starting with the company itself, Nash Guitars. They were founded around 2001. They've been around for quite some time and they've made a name for themselves of creating affordable custom shop instruments, essentially. They only do relic finishes. They do 100% nitro work. So these are most similar to say like a Fender custom shop. Now, how on earth do they get away with using Fender's exact headstock stylings? <laughs> I'm not entirely too sure, but I think it comes down to they buy these as officially licensed parts and then they rework them themselves. Apparently, there was a bit of a hubbub when this company first came out. And in fact, I actually documented one of their very early ones when uh, allegedly they were using actual Fender decals. But this is my first official Nash branded guitar as far as that goes. So I would assume they're buying these from like Warmyth or All Parts who have the license to create Fender replacement parts. And then they just work them into their very own guitars. And they have so many different models. They've got the T style, which is the Telecaster, the E style, which is the Esquire, the S style, which is a Stratocaster. You got your JGs and your JMs for Jaguars and Jagmasters. And then they've got a couple of other boutique -y ones. Like one of their more original designs is called the Wayfarer. It's like a double cut Tele with a double pick guard that chambered out, I would like to actually check one of those out. And then they also have what they call the T-Master, which is what Fender calls their offset tellies, basically a Telecaster and a Jazzmaster mixed. And then they also have some 12-string tellies available. So overall, these are not geared towards collectors in the slightest. They're all for players because a Fender custom shop would run you between like four and 6,000. These things brand new, somewhere between like 2250 to 3,000, somewhere a little bit more. They actually seem to hold value okay on the used market. You can get them around that 16 to $2,000 range. Now, I'm not sure if all Nash guitars come with a case like this or if this was just a particular era of them, but I thought this case was pretty cool. It has Nash guitars just pinned to the outside, but the rest is this really cool snakeskin X exterior. Like it doesn't feel particularly high end or quality, but for a Chinese made case that is completely form fitting to a Stratocaster, I was very impressed when I first unboxed this. You even have a little compartment in here, which has their sticker, a trem bar arm, and the hang tag for this particular one. So this finish is called Sonic Blue. It's got that age relic job that we'll take a look at on the workbench a little bit more in depth. But this really does feel like a nice player's guitar. The body almost feels thicker than usual. I don't know, maybe it's just because I haven't had a Stratocaster in a while, or maybe it's the 63 specs. But it's always the neck profile on these Nash guitars that's always pretty fascinating. I'm sure you can custom order them with whatever you want, but this one has this huge beefy V-shaped neck right here, and then it transitions more into a soft V up here. So it's really quite the interesting Stratocaster. So I'm excited you guys voted that you did want to see the full review and demo. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's throw it on the workbench to take a look at its individual parts and specs. All right, let's go ahead and see what makes this Nash guitar tick. So as far as the pickups go, according to our spec sheet, they should be Lawlers, which that does appear to be the case, made specifically for Nash. If you're not familiar with Lawler pickups, they're a boutique maker. There's just a whole bunch of writing all over this thing. So apparently the code for this guitar is Guy 4, but it's all the cloth wiring, so it's looking nice and vintage here. Very clean wiring work, I would say. However, this is just a regular Stratocaster as far as it's wired. The first Nash guitar I had had this weird tone morphing pot to it, which was kind of cool. As far as underneath the pickguard, this was cool to see. They've got another area where they coded the guitars. They were putting it together, Guy 4, and so they didn't finish over that area. Then we've got a couple other markings over here. Other than that, it's pretty standard. So in the circuit, the bridge is 8.03k ohms. Middle position, 5.86. Neck, 5.82. That means that's definitely a slightly overwound bridge pickup. That's kind of cool. Then of course, these two together, 3.43, and neck and middle, 2.95. Got that three ply mint green pick guard with the black layer in between. The pickups are a little bit more white than the pick guard, but that's a spec fender guys like, and your knobs match pretty well with the pick guard. You've got a master volume, a tone for your neck and middle, and an independent tone for your bridge. And here's what that output jack looks like all wired up. 
I've always been curious, manufacturers that only do relic guitars, I think they do that to cut down on returns of, oh, there's a small nick and ding right here, other than it just looking cool. But you don't really buy an aged Fender because it looks cool. That's a side effect. You buy it for the way it feels, especially on the neck. So we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. But this finish is really interesting feeling. It almost has a matted over satin feel to it. Kind of like an eggshell feel, but not exactly. It's a little bit more glossy than that. But then, peculiarly enough, this complete wear bare area, they must treat it with like a full-on gloss clear coat over top of it. That way the feel is about the same, but it's actually a little bit glossier here. You can definitely see the way that it reflects the light, but you can see the beautiful alder wood grain on this one. And you can tell how they kind of dirtied up the finish, giving it that natural aged in vibe, as well as having all these random nicks and dings and everything. We've got some scratches and whatnot over here. But this is a fairly new one. It's from 2020. Well, December 2020, so it's really like 2021. But moving on from the body, we've got our neck here. And it's pretty standardly spec'd. You've got your rosewood fretboard with a maple neck. However, I'm really curious if this was intentional or not. Up here in the first registers of the fretboard, do you see what happened to the grain of the rosewood? It caught the blue finish, but it's only up here. So it has like a, a blue grain fill. So I'm betting that's just spraying contamination, but I could be wrong. We've got a 25 and a half inch scale length. I seem to have misplaced my radius gauge. It definitely appears to be a little bit flatter. As far as neck specs, we get 1.62 inches at the nut and increases to 2.02 .02 by the 12th. Holy cow, 0.99 at the first fret. And then it's an even one inch at the 12th. Now do you see what I'm talking about? That is just such an extreme V shape. It's almost like an egg. But then by the 12th fret, it just flattens out a little bit. You can still kind of feel that V shape, but it has a little bit more shoulder to it. Moving on to the headstock, I really like the wood grain that we've got going on with this maple. That's a nice little touch on this one. But we've got the vintage poke it down, wrap it around style tuners here with a single string tree. And then personally, I've never really been a big fan of Nash's logo. It seems like it could use a little bit more stylization, but you know, at the same time, it has its own charm, but I never noticed there's like little gold stars behind some of the letters. When it's in color, they definitely stand out a little bit more. And that one is definitely vintage in style. To adjust the truss rod, you have to remove the neck. Now we can move on to the backside. So you got the same thing with this relic job going on where it's like a complete gloss over top of this. He probably does it to seal the wood so it doesn't warp or anything. Well, that's just a complete amateur hour guess. But it does come with a tremolo cover. Same color as the pick guard. And holy cow, that's a lot of springs. Usually you have three. This is a very stiff tremolo, but it stays in tune really well. Thanks to all those springs. Obviously, you can take some off if you prefer it to be a bit different. But you've got a couple of nicks and dings on this one from the relic job. Strap buttons in your usual locations. You have a nice aged looking neck plate. Then the neck, it's a very unique profile. I'm not sure if everybody would love this or not, but so far the only thing I don't really like about this guitar is the color of the neck. It just looks like a, a duckbill yellow, and maybe it's just in contrast to this. I'd like to see it a little bit more ambered over, but that, that's just my personal preference. But the neck feels fantastic. I love how they've just really sanded it down, so there is no finish. As far as the back of the headstock goes, it looks like it is a Bill Nash signature. Looks like a decal to me. Then you'll notice there's been no serial number on this guitar. It appears they put it at the top of the headstock. Guy 4. All said and done, this one weighs 7 pounds, 13.2 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds.
Now that we know all about this Nash S63, what are my final thoughts on this? I thought it sounded great. It plays nicely. It feels good in the hand. So I totally get why there's guys that love these Nash style Stratocasters. It's basically like a Fender Custom Shop at half the price, but you can customize them a little bit more without completely breaking the bank. So there's definitely a market for something like this. However, I, I just don't think this neck profiles for me. Like it's very interesting and it was fun to try and review and demo. I do like soft V-shaped necks, but this one uh, maybe maybe a little bit more extreme than I would prefer in the first fretting area. And maybe it's just something it would take more time to get used to as far as the soft V up here by the 12th. But it was certainly fun to get to check this one out. Now this is not for sale, it's not available. I'm actually holding it back for a friend in Japan who helps me get guitars. He asked if I could buy this and hold it for him until tax time because it was a pretty good deal on reverb. So short of something falling through between now and a couple of months down the road, it should already be spoken for. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, how about you check out a Fender Custom Shop Stratocaster? A fan favorite is the Coppercaster that I traded my way from a cheap $60 guitar to that multi-thousand dollar custom shop.